Good morning. Short sleeves. October 30th, and I'm wearing short sleeves. I'm not even taking a jacket. That's probably a mistake, but it's all right. We're heading to Berkey. Let's go finish double crop beans. made it to the farm here at Berkey, which we never actually made it here yesterday. So for those of you that don't know, this is kind of our home base here at Berkey. We've got a grain system and everything. Uh, Dad did bring the fuel trailer down yesterday, and we need it. So we're getting hooked up to that to take it over to the field. We'll fuel up the combine, and we can probably start combining any time, really. Wind's blowing, sun's shining. Can't be much due on the uh, beans. Let's go. Fueling. Government juicing. Boston. Take care of the log we caught with the bean head yesterday. I stopped and bought some snacks on my way down and some drinks. So I'm restocking the cab. Oh yeah, I uh, was reading through today's comments on yesterday's video. And I knew I was going to get roasted on the pods in the grain tank because the window behind me when we were talking about the double crop beans didn't look real pretty. Well... I just want to point something out to you guys. Here's the tickets from yesterday. 11.5 moisture, 60.4 test weight, 0.3 FM, 0.5 FM, zero dock. Gosh dang, I'm losing money because there's not enough pods in them. We are allowed 1% FM, and that 1% is by weight, not volume or what it looks like. Doesn't matter what they look like. They pull the pods and anything that's not soybeans out and weigh it, and we're allowed 1%. So theoretically, if I'm only delivering a half a percent, my bean yields would be a half a percent better if I would have more pods in the tank. So they're not bad. They're not bad at all. They actually are really good. That and double crop beans are just really hard to get clean, to get the pods out. They're, the pods are flat because the beans are so small. I've got the concave closed way down. I've got the rotor speed turned way up. You just can't get those flat ones out very good. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They're not going in my bin. I'm not saying we want to do a crappy job. I'm just saying it's not costing me anything to have those few flat pods in the tank. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Beautiful. You can see how flat our fields are down here. I know elevation change doesn't show up real well on camera anyway, so even in our hilly fields up west, it doesn't show up. But down here, they're pretty flat. This is this is flat, flat. Very consistent soil types. There's a little bit of uh, soil type change across some of the fields, but not a lot. Certainly not any elevation change. Makes it fun, big open fields that we can go fast. 282 gallons later. This fuel trailer is so much better than the old 100 gallon transfer tanks in the back of a pickup. Oh gosh, that's how we used to do it all. We would bring two of them every day down to Berkey here for the combine, the tractor, tillage, the generator, whatever. And it's just, it was a lot. This is way better. Goes the neighbor with their big old hog manure tanker. Anyway, let's look at these beans and see if they're ready to go or not. It's only 9:30, so we we're really early, um, but it's windy and sunny, and yeah, they're a little soft. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait a little while. Probably good. The beans picked up a little moisture. They might not be 10 percent, 11 percent. Eh, they're still pretty dry, but I don't think the pods will thrash open very good. We'll give them an hour. Maybe 10.30 we'll come over. Ah, look at that old girl. Haven't used her much this year since it's been sitting down here at Berkey. It's just not convenient. And then there's that. Still need a new forklift. The seed tender down here. Is it clean? That's what we were debating the other day. Some of this equipment, it looks clean. Some of this equipment is going to get stored down here. 
For example, the grain cart. When we're done, we'll be done with it, and there's no real reason to take it back to Waldron, so we can bring the power washer down here and clean it up. And that needs to go back. We'll grab our anhydrous bar and take it back with us and eliminate a trip later, so that'll be good. And then, uh, what else? Oh, the bean head can stay down here. We usually store that in here as well. So, yeah. Anyway, just looking around, seeing what we got. Well, while we're waiting on stuff to dry out, I thought I would look through some of the grain system stuff and figured, well, this is as good a time as any to explain some stuff to you guys. This video is going to be stupid long. We didn't even start combining yet. Anyway, um, this is the inside of a grain bin. This is our big bin here. It's not that big. Um, but it's a 20,000 bushel, it's 30 foot diameter, GSI, top dry. We'll talk about the top dry portion of it in a minute. But this is basically the standard inside bottom of any grain bin, basically every one that we have. You have this perforated floor. You can see we got a little wheat we need to clean up in here from when we had wheat this summer. But there's this floor that's got holes in it, and it's setting on stands, and it's probably 8 or 10 inches, eh, 10 10 inches above the concrete that this is sitting on and then outside there's an aeration fan I think it's over in this corner somewhere and it blows air underneath that floor which then comes up through the holes up through the grain and out through the vents in the roof and that's what keeps the grain in good condition and it keeps it uh, from spoiling and helps uh, dry any condensation or moisture that might get in here out so that's a good thing you'll see this auger right here that's fairly uh, uh, obvious thing right that is the power sweep so that's the sweep auger you'll also notice these holes in the floor those are the sumps this is the center sump and essentially um, there's an auger tube that goes underneath all three of these here and it, as you can see it go out there it goes back to the grain leg and all of the grain goes out through that so we'll open up a gate on this center sump which I think is already open um, and it allows grain to flow into that auger and then gets augered into there. Once this, once it stops flowing out the center, you've kind of got these sloped walls. Basically, you've got a, a funnel or an inverted cone. Is that, is that right? Pyramid. Inverted. Yeah. Anyway, it's like a funnel, essentially. Um, and so then we can open up these other two, which helps bring this side down. And then we turn on this auger. There's a gearbox on here, and there's a way to engage it from outside. And then that auger brings all of the grain to the center sump and it kind of works its way around the bin to help empty it. That's most all of our bins. I don't all, not all of them have the power sweep, especially down here, um, but most of our bins, especially the newer, bigger ones, all have power sweeps in them. They've got the sumps all the same. They all have aeration floors in them. Uh, we don't have any anymore that have concrete floors with no aeration or with just channels or anything like that. This is pretty much standard for us. Now, what makes this bin unique? is what's up there. So this is called a top dry. And if you look right over there, you'll see there's a, like a grate and there's a big hole in the side of the bin right there. That is an air duct because uh, you can't see it real well, but see the, all the uh, steel structure under there? There's actually a false floor up there. Basically another one of these perforated floors, just a little bit different. Uh, and we can hold grain up on the top there. And so it's about one ring thick. We can hold about 1,500 bushels up on the top of this bin. You see the chutes around the bottom and then a few in the center there. We, those are attached to a chain that goes up to that circle in the middle and we can tighten the cable up that pulls those up so that they don't allow the grain to come out. Uh, and then when you're ready to dump it, you lower them down and then it allows it to funnel down into the bottom here. But essentially, that fan or that uh, big air vent up there is attached to a giant burner on the outside of the bin in an air duct and it blows hot air into the top of this bin which then pushes up again through that perforated floor through the wet grain drying it out and then after it runs for two three four hours whatever it takes to dry it uh, we lower those chutes drop the then hot dried grain down to the bottom here and keep in mind we've still got air coming up through the bottom pushing that heat back up into the next batch we reload it and repeat the process that's how we dry corn down here this is uh this is our newer top dry i don't remember what year we put this one up 2012 actually i do remember it was 2012 i remember doing it we put this one together ourselves and at least the top of it 
uh, and it was hot that year. Um, but anyway, so that's how we dry the corn here. This other bin right there is also a top dry bin, albeit a smaller one. It's a 24 foot diameter GSI and it is not nearly as tall, uh, holds a thousand bushels in a batch. And so we dry all of our corn with these two dryer bins. I'll walk up to the top so I can show you from up there as well, but um, this is how we dried all of our corn back to Waldron for a long time. We had an old Stormore top dry, 30 foot, that was put up in 1986. Uh, and then in 2006, we added the GSI top dry that's almost identical to this bin that is still there and we still used it this fall, but only to fill itself. We didn't actually um, dry through it a lot because in 2017, 17, 18, 17 I think, we put up the grain handler, the big dryer that we have now. And we actually took the old Stormore dryer out to make room for that when we did it. All right, so we're up top now. And here you can see that false floor. We gotta clean this bin out. We're gonna have to go through and brush all that wheat down and then sweep up the floor. Oh yeah, fun. Anyway, this is the spot where we can hold that 1500 bushels up here. It's got some bands to help level it. And then there's temperature sensors and probes through there. And it uses temperature and time to determine how to, long to dry the corn floor. So anyway, that's what this is. It is windy up here. Corn is all still standing really well. Looks pretty good. This is our field. That's our field. Farther over there is our field. That's our field. Basically the corn you can see from here is ours. Hopefully we get into some of this field here tonight. That's the goal, get over here tonight. But we've got, so we're, we're over that way. Uh, can't see the combine from here. But you see that woods off there in the distance? That's where we were combining yesterday. So we're kind of just across the road this way from the next. That's where our kids are. And then on the other side of that cornfield, way over there, you'll see a housing development and there's some more double crop beans. That's where we're going this afternoon. The last of the double crops. There's 78 acres over there, 77. And then we come back here and start shelling corn. We don't have enough acres here to justify a continuous flow dryer or grain handler like we've got uh, back up at Waldron. These two dryers are more than sufficient for what we need. Sometimes they're a little slow, especially if the corn is really wet. Corn is not really wet this year, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, but we, we're only we're less than 300 acres of corn. It's not like we have to be able to get it done that fast. 10.30, time to go. There's Dad, he made it down with a backhoe. We'll level up his uh, ditch cleaning spoils. Well, let's go. We got about 140 acres to do. We did 138 yesterday, it was about half, so. Um, we're gonna finish this field and then we got that one other one that I showed you this morning. There's Shouldn't be too hard to do. I guess it's less than 140 I guess because there's I don't even know. What do we got left in this field? Let's see. Let's see what the monitor has to say 51 51 plus 77. That's what we've got to do These are a little bit better over here than the ones we did yesterday across the road um, 37 average, like I, these are maybe high 30s. That's, that's that's fantastic. These would have been planted a little bit earlier and the ones that we got left to do were the first planted ones. So maybe that planting date thing is a little bit bigger deal uh, than I thought yesterday. Yesterday I thought the residue and where we baled it, they were a little bit better. Uh, you can still see some thin spots where they didn't come through the residue quite as well as where we uh, bailed over there. Had, didn't have all that straw on the ground. But I wasn't willing to let the guys bail all 275 acres of straw before we'd plant the double crop beans. They would have never got it done on time. <laughs> it can't, you just can't. I mean, doing 60 acres is one thing, doing 250 is a whole nother thing. And so um, it wasn't really an option to get it all bailed. 
at least not timely, and I figured the timeliness of getting the beans planted as early as possible was more important than getting rid of the residue. I still think that's true. Well, I got the grain cart full, or almost full. I didn't load a truck yet, but um, we're moving right across. We're almost up to the house, and we're almost over to our variety change. It's like we got round and a half here to get over to where we changed varieties. We'll see if there's any difference in them or not. These aren't bad. I mean, they're around 36. That's pretty darn good. You can definitely see on the yield map, they're much better on this end of the field than they are on that end of the field, which is kind of a little unexpected because everything is so consistent down here. I don't know what exactly the driver behind that is. Um, but yeah, it's we're moving here. We're up to 35 acres done in this field. We had 11 when we started, so 20, a little over 20 into the day. It's uh, not quite noon yet. A great start to it. Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? There was something. Oh, Phil should be back soon. He was. Um... Remember this summer when we were irrigating? And I was using that cat generator, the little generator, and we kept having trouble with it tripping a circuit breaker and a fuse or a circuit breaker on there. And uh, my thought was that it was, well, we, we switched it out, put it in the shop, and I was noticed that it was a little low on oil, and I thought, well, maybe that's what it was because I traced the circuit. But that turns out that wasn't it. Um, Phil brought it down here to the grain system because that's what we really have them for is for running our grain systems. And it ran, but it was still having trouble sometimes. And, Anyway, he took it to the cat dealer down in Perrysburg, Ohio, just south of Toledo here. Uh, and before he even made it home, they had diagnosed it, found a broken wire somewhere or something that was causing the issue. Um, and it, in addition to that, fixed a, a couple of um, leaky fuel valves or something that was allowing the fuel to drain out of the fuel system if you left the valves open when you shut it off so that we should fix that issue, which was great. We hadn't had a chance to go back and pick it up from the dealer. So he's going to do that this morning. In fact, that might be him coming back to the field right now. So maybe he's got it and is done. Um, but yeah, we, we got our generator, which we are going to need to run corn later today. So that was kind of a priority is, is getting that around. Right down to the end here, we got one more round. One, I don't know. We got to unload this time and then we'll have one more pass or one more round. Uh, definitely see some difference in the variety so our variety change was kind of like right here so definitely the ones over there that were on the first side of the field were better than what's over here the good news is the last field that we have is all the variety that was on the other side so those were a 3-0 maturity 3023s these are a 2-8 maturity the fuller season beans were a little better that's interesting that's what kind of what we expect um but yeah that's okay Field average is still at 33. We've we've dropped off some from the 36 we were at, or 37. I think it made it up to, but still really good beans. Maybe the next field to make 40. Uh, that's probably wishful thinking. Maybe the next field to make 35. Done with this one. All right. Um, we're gonna get unloaded. Drop the head. Dad's right across the road, so he's gonna help us move, and we're gonna keep on rolling. It is not quite 1.30. We've got just under 80 acres. We need four hours. We should be done by, say, 6 o'clock. Which almost definitely means something's going to break or go wrong, and we are not going to be done by 6 o'clock. But hey, here's to hoping. Moving out. Here's our um, fun with roundabouts intersection. Oh man. They do not make these wide enough. Yeah, you guys mounted up in the corner, so I'm not holding my phone and driving. Just recording, talking to you. Not jumping the curb, so we'll take the sidewalk over here. I know you can't see my tires, but up and down and up and we're just gonna stay on that sidewalk all the way around front and rear tires I think it's a right turn and not straight through we made it fields on the left here we got a driveway down on the far end no oh. 
my driveway. Alright, turn signal is on. My head is behind me and we're in the middle of the road. Don't pass me on the left. We're going to back into this driveway. It's going to pull up right in front of us. Taking the head. We'll wait for this guy. He's on the wrong side of the road. Engage. Let's go. I'm gonna go out on the road. Oh shoot, there's a car coming. Alright, we gotta go. Alright, we made it. We're fine. We do have a lime pile down here. That's all the lime we need for all the farms at Berkey, so. Uh, not a big deal, but we gotta get spreader down here at some point. My uh, guy that I've been buying my lime from, or that's doing the trucking for us, called me last week and said, Hey, if you need any more lime, you better get it this week because they're gonna run out by Halloween. I said, Okay, well, that's what I need. Just go pile it. This is the last field of double crop soybeans. Last field of soybeans for the year, so. Um, yeah, the one next to our housing development. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about before. Not our housing development, the housing development that we farm next to. It's a retirement community. Um, but this is a pretty decent farm. This was where we started combining wheat. This was the first combined, uh, first combined wheat, first planted double crop beans. So there is potential that they're a little better here than what the other ones have been. I think we planted these on the 23rd, 4th, of June, something like that. So they got planted really early for double crop beans. However, this farm does have just a little bit more sand on it than some of those other ones that we were on. This corner here is just a little sandy, uh, which may have hurt more with how dry it was. Now, we'll see. Well, we are uh, 20 acres into the field at this point. These beans aren't as good. Yeah, I wonder if we missed a rain over here. Like I said, it could be a um, the sandy soil, sandier soils, or of course, yeah, I don't know. It's that side of the field is not great. You can see it up there. So I mean, they're not bad. They're 28. It's not like it's a huge difference. Um, be interesting to see as we move across whether they pick up or not. But eh, they're 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 good beans. They're not great. Whatever. We'll fly across here. Let's get them done. Ah, just for my boys. It's a it's a cyber truck. They, for some reason, think they're the coolest thing, so see one in real life, gotta, sh gotta film it for them. Done, D-U-N, double crop beans, they are done. Just finished a live stream, so I didn't get to show you the end of it, but uh, yeah, the field didn't do great, uh, 27, it's not fantastic, but it is what it is. The good news is they all fit on that truck, so we don't have to worry about a little jag left over, so. Cool, good deal. Um, before we drop this head, I want to go and drop the pan underneath it because once it's on the header cart, we can't do that, and I want to clean it out a little bit before we put this away for the winter. So, um, 
What a deal, what a deal, what a deal. It's a quarter after five. We're gonna try and go shell some corn here. Let's crawl underneath here. Ugh, and open up this drop pan. Okay, this is gonna be a two-hand job. You ready? Oh, I should have parked the other way. That was dumb. Yeah, that's better. This was a new piece of plastic at the beginning of the year. Look at this. That's ridiculous. Why is that wearing so fast? So we'll do some maintenance to this before weed harvest next year since we're done with it this year, but that is wore out. I know we've got some broken knives and guards. I got broken guard here. Those knives are in bad shape. That's just from today. That was not like this this morning. There's a knife missing there. Maybe two knives missing there. That's a problem. I know we've got a broken guard here. And we got a broken guard here. I've just been letting them go because I knew that uh, we were about done and if they were cutting okay, we were gonna let them go. But that one's wore through. Yeah, gonna need some maintenance before weed harvest. And then we've got a couple of skid pad plates. This one, the center one, I, that drives me crazy because we just replaced that. Anyway. Get the head unhooked. Think we can get Jack to hook the old S10 up to the head and haul her home for us? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Anyway, let's head back to the farm and hook up to our corn head. Bill's gonna haul the last load of double crop beans in. That's load number eight of double crop beans. And it's mostly full, it's not clear full, but close enough. We probably had oh, over $70,000 worth of uh, double crop beans. That's, that's, that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, there's a corn head. Yep, 20 feet. And we got our um, outside stuff changed on the combine. We're gonna run a round or two of end rows off here. And we'll go get our grain cutter. We're gonna get a lot done, but we're gonna get some done. All right, well, we got some end rows done. It says it's 16.3. That's fantastic. So, that dryers won't be our bottleneck here. Hauling corn away will be our bottleneck, and that's okay. Um, anyway, we got these ends done. I'm gonna need to unload here pretty quick, so we're gonna go over and get our grain cart, and then we'll come back and open some more ends up. All right, we got the grain cart. We're finishing and opening up some of these front ends. Dad just got back. He's been leveling off them spoils with the backhoe all day, uh, but he said he got done, and he's over here, so I'm, I'm gonna let him jump in the combine so we can take the grain cart to the back end of the field and get that opened up. This field's gonna be rough for multiple reasons. One, it was wet when we planted this. It was getting late, they were calling for rain, so we went and we planted it when we probably shouldn't have, especially given the fact that it didn't rain for like a week after we did when there was some rain they were calling for that we missed. And um, yeah, we should have waited, but we didn't. That said, the corn is still gonna be decent. Um, come on. But it's there's some ruts on the ends. There's some in this field. The other field around the corner is going to be worse. I remember doing it. It's really bad. It is what it is. Uh, and then this field, on top of that, we tiled it last summer. And the tile lines run directly across the rows. And we're going to feel every single one of them with the combine and the grain cart. And it's going to be rough. And it is what it is. All right. Dad's going to run combine here for a little bit. I don't think we're gonna do a lot tonight. I mean, it's already 6.42. We might run for another hour or something. Um, well, we got a few more ends to do over behind that barn. And then we're gonna go along the north side and do the ends in the back. I'm gonna get this cart empty. We'll see where we're at from there. Try and dig a hole right through the center here or something. This is the field uh, with the chicken water trial. So we won't see any results from that, I'm sure. It was what? The swipe at eight rows was 16% moisture at 254. Oh, well that'll work, won't it? I didn't expect that. 
All right, I yeah, I figured it was gonna be dry. 16 is great. We're not even gonna turn the dryers on this year. Um, but 254, I didn't see that coming. Well, that's good. That's promising that we'll average over 200 then. All right, let's, uh, uh, this won't fill the truck. Let's do probably two or three rounds here yet and we'll fill the grain cart up and call it good enough, I think. Okay. Uh, what a deal. I seriously didn't think the corn would be that. And it's not going to average 254, but we might average 220. That'd be awesome. And this may be the best field. This is the best variety, so that's good. This is my 111 day. 111 day corn coming out of the field at 16% moisture. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So Phil just walked around the barn. I think he's probably grabbing a full truck, and I'm going to try and get him to not empty it. So is it going to rain tonight before we get here in the morning? Well, that's kind of what I thought too, but if we decide we need to have everything closed up and tarped, then we better stop now, otherwise we can do another round and have a full green cart, but it doesn't matter. If the caller quits then, I want to get up. That's what I figured would happen. Okay. That's probably best. Probably we can roll the tarp and get the combine closed. We would probably be able to tarp the cart if we filled it, but I don't know if we would get the combine empty if we do another round. And then we wouldn't be able to close the covers on that, so we'll just shut her down. Uh, and planting the spring. Yeah, I know. The ends are rough. We're gonna bring the disc down to disc the ends before we even finish shelling the field. He picked up a piece of tile. What are the chances? No. We have made it home! back to Waldron and now I'm on my way home my um, 25 second commute here so thanks for watching today have a great night it was a good day we got a lot of double crop beans run about 12 or 13 acres of corn it's gonna be decent it's gonna be dry this harvest will go fast uh, or this you know stuff at Berkey here so that's good we'll have to see what the rain does weather does but we're gonna head down there in the morning Brock's gonna meet us over there and uh, we're gonna start shelling corn we should get a fair bit done fairly quickly so that's good have a great night we will see you in the morning